This is the all new Hyundai Ionic 6. What it basically is, is an Ionic 5. It's the same platform, just in a different shape. And actually this different shape, Hyundai claims, will make this car go 100 kilometers further on a full charge. This car builds on Kia and Hyundai's eGMP platform. And basically what that means is that it has an 800 volts battery architecture. This car is uh, mounted with the big battery. That's 77.4 kilowatt hours total capacity, 74 kilowatt hours net capacity. However, also the eGMP platform is always, always mounted with permanent magnet motors on the rear axle and if it's an all-wheel drive version it also have a per has a permanent magnet motor on the front axle and what's a little special about these cars on this platform is that if the car is all-wheel drive and has this motor on the front axle well that permanent magnet motor has a DAS system as Kia and Hyundai call it that decouples the motor physically from the wheels when the car just coasts and that's good for efficiency. You also get a frunk in a car like this and if it's a rear wheel drive car the frunk is larger than the all wheel drive car simply because there's more stuff going on under the hood in the all wheel drive version. In this video I'll tell you a little about the engineering of this car. I'll also tell you about my experiences. I've been driving this car for a week. I took it for a long drive, tried to check out how the consumption, the efficiency is of the car and I have also been doing a DC charging test that I'm looking forward to showing you. The Ionic 6 is experienced completely differently from the Ionic 5. For example the ceiling height can be a challenge for tall people but for me it's not a problem. The legroom in the back is good and seating comfort is generally good in all seats. The choice of materials in the cabin gives a good quality feeling but the biggest inconvenience I can find in the cabin is the car's infotainment system which is a maze to figure out as well as the fact that the car's navigation does not give you an estimated state of charge which is an almost indispensable function to have in an EV once you have driven with it. This car's aerodynamic design is actually pretty interesting because Hyundai has been going quite some steps to make this car very efficient. For instance, it has these active air flaps. They can open and close and when they're open it lets air into the radiator and therefore that can cool the components which requires that in the car. When it's closed then it guides the air towards these air curtains here. What these air curtains are doing is actually making the car smaller because it guides the air around the wheels and also uses these wheel gap reducers. Now, however, this car has the optional 20 inch wheels and that looks great, but it's not very good for efficiency. Actually, when mounting these wheels, you go from 614 kilometers WLTP more to like 545 something like that and that's because these wheels are wider than the standard 18 inch wheels and therefore the air curtains they're not able to guide the air around the wheels and that's as I said not good for efficiency. You also have the possibility when buying an Ionic 6 of specking the car with different side mirrors. This one has the standard traditional side mirrors which I would go with also. But you can also put cameras here and then you get screens inside the car. Uh, it's a system that you may know from the traditional Audi e-tron that's been on the market for 3-4 years. Uh, those can also be specced with this system. I've been trying these systems a couple of times and yeah, I can't get used to it. I like these traditional mirrors and the gain in range is so little, a few kilometers actually. So I would be, yeah, I, I wouldn't care. When the air passes the roof of the car, it also ends up at this large rear spoiler. It's quite special for a car like this. But this spoiler uh, provides a lot of downforce to the car, makes it drive better and also 
in uh, wor it works together with this extra spoiler and then it actually creates less drag and that's what you don't want because drag is also not good for efficiency but that's a pretty clever design and even though the rear maybe looks like a Porsche from the 70s I I actually kind of like it the car is not particularly sporty, but does what you expect of a daily driver. The noise level in the cabin is low and the comfort fine. The adaptive cruise control and auto steer work fine, however the active sign recognition does not work as refined as the best competitors. As I said, this car comes with an 800 volt battery architecture on the traction battery here in the whole bottom of the car. The battery has a size of 77.4 kilowatt hours total capacity and 74 kilowatt hours net capacity. And Hyundai claims that this car, because it has the 800 volt architecture, is able to charge from 10 to 80 percent in just 18 minutes. And of course, I couldn't let a claim like this just stand, so I went to test that. I also decided to test the Hyundai's claim of the car's amazing efficiency. I drove under optimal conditions approximately 250 km motorway on to my destination and 170 km country roads on my way home. A total of over 420 km and here you can see my consumption. 201 watt hours per kilometer on the motorway where speeds were between 130 and 110 kilometers an hour. But with traffic and road work my average speed went down to 103 kilometers an hour. On my way home my average speed was 71 kilometers per hour and my consumption 141 watt hours per kilometer. I charged on a DC fast charger for 9 minutes and arrived home with 21% state of charge. But what does all these numbers mean? Well. Basically what it means is that this car is very efficient but also that these 20 inch rims they actually spoil a little of the party if you like efficiency over let's say design. I drove this car in optimal conditions as you could see if you know a little about EVs the heat pump hardly worked on, on this trip. Sometimes the heat pump can maybe take like 20% of your energy uh, if it's really cold especially. And uh, here it was more like 1-2% to so that gave uh, a good efficiency because uh, most of the power from the battery actually went in propelling the car forwards. A Tesla Model 3 is one of the most efficient normal road cars you can buy and the Model 3 is definitely still more efficient than this car it's also smaller so that would be perfectly it would make perfectly sense the model y is a bit taller more like a crossover suv and the consumption of the model y and this car they're pretty similar maybe this is marginally better and if you would spec it with the standard 18 inch wheels yeah it would maybe even be right between the model 3 and the model y so that's up to you if you like the design of the 20 inch or if you could actually uh, like the efficiency over the design. That's up to you. Please uh, comment and like. And if you like my content on EVs, feel free to subscribe on this channel also. See you. Bye.